Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're doing a 1050 vs 1050 Ti showdown. So representing the 1050 will be this Asus Expedition model, quite a good model of 1050. And representing the 1050 Ti is the Asus Jewel 1050 Ti which is like an entry level uh, 1050. So the reason why I picked these two models is to make it as close as possible, basically best case scenario for this 1050. Um, and we'll see, you know, if it's a bit closer or how big of a difference there really is between the two cards. So let's first start out then with the GPU. So they both feature the 14 nanometer GP107 Pascal GPU. The main difference is that the uh, 1050 is basically a cut down version, slightly cut down compared to the 1050 Ti. So it has uh, 640 CUDA cores where the 1050 Ti has 768 and the 1050 has 40 text units and the 1050 Ti has 48, so 8 more. Now that's not the only difference there, uh, also the clock speed. So this one was really strange. So the 1050 has a rated speed, this is what it says on the box and this is what it says on the website of uh, 1,455 megahertz. That's its rated boost clock speed. However, through GPU Boost 3.0, they will automatically overclock higher if temperatures allow, and it automatically clocked itself all the way up to 1,683 megahertz. So that's all in well. However, the weird thing is that the uh, Dual 1050 Ti has a lower rated clock speed but actually boosted higher, which is really strange to see on an inferior model, which uh, I really don't understand. So the 1050 Ti had a rated boost speed of 1,392 megahertz, which is reference, but it boosted itself through GPU Boost 3.0 all the way up to 1,733 megahertz, which is crazy. I've never seen that before. So basically, I just won the silicon lottery with the 1050 Ti because I honestly thought the 1050 would have the higher clock speed. But no, it was this guy. So that was really interesting to see. And I don't think I've ever seen that in any showdown I've ever done on this channel. Now let's move on to TDP then. So they both come with a 75 watt TDP. That's good. They both don't need a power connector. You just uh, slot them straight in and off you go. As far as memory goes, uh, the 1050 has two gigabytes of GDR5 memory on a 128-bit bus at 7,000 megahertz. The 1050 Ti is exactly the same, except that it has twice the amount of memory. It has four gigabytes instead. So let's go over the coolers quickly. Now I went over them in more detail in the unboxing and overview video, so go back and watch them if you want to know more details about some of the special features and the coolers themselves of these cards. But basically they run a very very similar aluminium heatsink on them. Uh, no heat pi pipes there, it just slots straight on. The main difference I would say is that the uh, Expedition model has uh, better fans, very basic small fans, um, small in terms of the uh, fan blades uh, on the Jewel, whereas the Expedition has much fatter fan blades and it just looks overall like a, a better cooler. We'll talk about temps and noise a bit later on. Uh, so yeah, the Jewel is just a more basic model for sure, um, but as I said before, they both have the same heat sink, so we shouldn't see too much of a discrepancy. It's going to be basically about those fans, and both of these models have uh, upgraded components, which is something uh, that's always good to see. Now let's jump straight into the benchmarks then. So this will be interesting. Uh, obviously the 1050 Ti goes in with, well it should win because it's got more memory, it's got a higher speed, and it's got uh, more CUDA cores and texture units. However, let's just see how much of a discrepancy there really is.
back. So we see a good win there for the 1050 Ti. It averages about like nine frames a second better than the uh, 1050. So yeah, uh, good one there for the 1050 Ti. The 1050 still does pretty good. If you just look at its base numbers, that's pretty good for an entry level graphics card. It was getting over 30 in a lot of those games, uh, which is really nice to see. Now, I only did them at 1080p because these cards just aren't really made to go above 1080p. They're just made for a solid 1080p gaming experience. So I didn't see any need to go above that in my testing. However, performance isn't everything. Uh, what about temperatures? And this is where it gets weird in terms of temps and noise. This is a kind of quite a bizarre showdown in terms of the results. So uh, temperatures wise, we'll just jump into that. So I ran this in the Unigent Valley benchmark on the Extreme HD preset. The Expedition 1050 went up to 64 degrees Celsius at 39% fan speed. Whereas the Jewel 1050 Ti went up to 51 degrees Celsius at 55% fan speed. So we see that the uh, Expedition was at a much lower fan speed, um, but got a lot hotter. So in terms of temps, just looking at those numbers, the 1050 Ti wins. It just straight up wins by about 13 degrees. Which is not what I was expecting because this is supposedly the inferior cooler. Judging by how Asus say their models sort of go. So yeah, I was really interested uh, by that, but obviously it was at a higher fan speed. So then, and these are all just set at the out of the box settings. Then we move on to noise and the situation is drastically reversed. The Jewel 1050 Ti might have won in terms of temperatures, but boy, it lost in terms of noise. This thing is so loud for a little entry level graphics card. It's pretty astonishing actually. And it's not even when you're gaming, just normally it is still quite loud. It has no zero dispel technology, which means these fans are always spinning. And it's just generally quite a loud graphics card. Whereas the uh, Expedition 1050 is very quiet. A casual stuff browsing the web these fans are stopped it makes no noise whatsoever and once you start gaming it's still very very quiet so yeah in terms of noise big win there for the expedition 1050 and that's purely because this runs such a conservative fan curve compared to the dual 1050 ti which runs such an aggressive fan curve um but obviously gets better temperatures uh on the gpu because of it but as always i'll let you guys judge for yourself so first we'll do the 1050 um, show you what that sounds like and then we'll show you what the dual 1050 ti sounds like So yeah, big win there for the 1050 in terms of noise. It is way more quiet. Now, um, you can obviously change fan speeds. So if you bought the 1050, the dual 1050 Ti like this, you could go in and set your own custom fan curve and make it way, way more conservative because it's so aggressive out of the box. And uh, that would obviously bring some of the noise down. But even then, I would say that the Expedition will probably be slightly quieter just because I think it has a better fan design uh, than the uh, 1050Ti here. But yeah, uh, that is something you can do. Obviously, your temperatures will then go up. So in terms of temps and noise, I would call it, it's, it's basically a tie. But as of how they are out of the box, the 1050Ti gets better temperatures but it is quite substantially louder than the quieter but hotter running Expedition 1050. So yeah, with all that in mind, let's uh, wrap up this video. So what do I make of these two graphics cards? So we've got to bring price into the equation. And the Expedition 1050 currently is on special at Playtech for 219 New Zealand dollars. The Jewel 1050 Ti on the other hand is 309 New Zealand dollars over at Playtech. Which means if we add all the benchmarks together to get the average FPS, the 1050 Expedition has an average FPS of 33.4, 
and when you add it together with that price it means it has a dollar per frame value of six dollars and 55 cents per frame the jewel 1050 ti on the other hand when you add all the benchmarks together uh, it comes out with an average frames of 41.6 frames per second average and when you add that together with the price it means it'll cost you seven dollars and 42 cents per frame so purely value for money with those prices listed right now over on playtech the 1050 expedition is better however you will be saying well kevin that's on special what about at its regular price of 249 New Zealand dollars at its regular price it pretty much makes us a tie so uh, yeah with that in mind and obviously prices are going to be different where you live I would say that I would probably go with the 1050 Ti it just feels like the better all-round graphics card and what also makes me say that is the fact that it's not going to be limited by that two gigabytes of memory so in this particular case, I would go for the 1050 Ti. But that being said, I would probably tell you to get a different model because I'm not really sold on this dual model. I find it to be very, very basic and not really that good. So maybe look at a different model, but go for the 1050 Ti. I would say it's definitely worth it to just save up your money a bit more, just spend that bit more, and I think you're going to get a much better graphics card out of it compared to the 1050 so that's basically how i would round out this video now i thank you all for watching this video uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that like button and as always i'll see you guys next time